With all the attention we pay to our car's high-tech parts, it's easy to overlook the importance of a vehicle's bumpers. About 80% of car accidents are front or rear collisions. The bumper is designed to absorb the force of the impact, minimizing damage in low-speed collisions. Bumpers can be made of plastic, fiberglass, aluminum, or steel. This company makes steel bumpers. They start out as blanks, steel sheets just eight hundredths of an inch thick. These are en route to becoming truck bumpers. A robot feeds each blank through a series of seven to nine dies, depending on the bumper model. Each die stamps the blank into a particular shape using some 2,000 tons of force. This progressively forms the blank into the final bumper shape. Both the front and rear bumpers go through the same process, only with different dies. The bumpers now travel to the next production area, where a worker clamps each one onto a specially designed cart. At this point, the factory paints certain models. These bumpers will get chrome plating. But first, they travel through a series of buffing wheels. The bumper surface must be impeccably smooth because the chrome finish magnifies even the tiniest flaws. A computer-guided crane stacks the bumpers and maneuvers them through the chrome plating process. First, it submerges the bumpers in several cleaning tanks to remove any residue left on the surface from previous operations. The company won't divulge what chemicals it uses to clean the steel, because this surface preparation is the secret to first-rate metal plating. The first plating tank applies a coat of nickel to protect the steel from corrosion. The next tank applies the chrome layer. The factory uses the standard electroplating process. In a water and chemical filled tank, the plating metal particles get a positive charge, while a negative charge runs through the bumpers. This magnetically draws the particles onto the bumpers in an even layer. After a thorough rinse, the bumpers are inspected. Workers scrutinize the chrome mirror finish under high intensity light. Meanwhile, this machine pressure injects molten plastic into various molds. A built-in cooling system hardens the plastic within seconds. Then, out comes the plastic components that attach to the bumpers. One of those plastic parts is the step pad that covers the top of the rear bumper. Once the pad's in place, a worker attaches a built-in trailer hitch. Steel mounting brackets help structurally reinforce the bumper. The front bumper goes down a different assembly line. A worker attaches a plastic trim that hangs down just below the bumper. Its aerodynamic shape helps direct airflow to the engine compartment. Next, four steel reinforcing brackets that will attach the bumper to the truck's frame. And finally, the license plate holder and fog lamps. Workers tighten all the bolts to a specified tightness. This ensures that the bumper and its mounting brackets will adequately absorb the force of the collision. Whenever a new model goes into production, the first few bumpers off the line go through a battery of tests to prove they can withstand stress, vibration, and a certain degree of what engineers call crash energy. Other types of bumper systems use a combination of springs and energy absorbing material such as plastic foam. With either method, the goal is for the bumper to absorb the impact. In a low impact crash, this should ideally confine the damage to the bumper itself, leaving the headlights, the engine, and the driver unscathed.